it's Tamar. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I have sat down and made a video. It's been like nearly two months probably since I even posted a video on YouTube and the last video I posted was of what I ate in a day and I like posted it way after I filmed it so it feels like it's been forever like forever. I don't even know what's gonna happen because I know that I say in most videos that I want to make YouTube more consistent. We'll see. Anyway, welcome back to my channel. If you, if this is the first video of mine that you've ever watched, hi, I'm Tamar. I am 23 years old now. I am married to a man called Matt Willoughby and he is beautiful. <laughs> and we have been married for six months now. What else can I say about me? I'm vegan. Um, I make videos about basically everything like lifestyle related so my diet mostly because I'm vegan health and fitness marriage um, mental health go watch my videos if you're interested and Matt and I also have a vlog channel which I will link in the description if you're interested in checking out a married couple vlog channel I love coffee so today's video is going to be a recap roundup whatever you want to call it of 2017 I am going to put my glasses on just because I cannot see myself in the viewfinder without them and I'm paranoid that I'm not in focus. <laughs> okay, that's better. Apologies for any glare. Oh my gosh, you can see glare. Ugh, I just want to be able to see. I'm sorry for the distracting glare in my glasses, but we're just going to have to deal with it for this video until I get contact lenses because I cannot see myself in the viewfinder and that throws me off. Okay, so this video is gonna be a roundup of 2017, which was the most life-changing year I have ever experienced, except perhaps for the year that I was born because that will have started my life. I'm gonna go straight through from the beginning, like through events that happened. So in 2017, I was in my final year of university. So when I started January, 2017 I was halfway through my final year I was writing two dissertations I was studying English literature and philosophy at the University of Birmingham which is in England so I was studying English lit and philosophy I was writing a dissertation in each my English lit dissertation if anyone interested was on astrology and Christology in C.S. Lewis's space trilogy and my philosophy dissertation was on the ethics of eating meat in a warming world hence the veganism um, so that was fun, <laughs> it was stressful, but I would highly recommend Birmingham as a university if you're thinking of going there, or if you're currently in sixth form and you're wondering where to go for university, Birmingham is a good one. I really, really enjoyed my time there. Um, and I never thought I would say this, but I do really miss it. I miss studying and being a student, but I guess it's hard to appreciate it when you're in it because you feel stressed and you've got deadlines and stuff like that. But it is a really fun time of your life, like living away from home and being independent for the first time ever and stuff like that. So yes, I was at university at the start of 2017 and then a month later I was already engaged so Matt and I, Matt proposed to me in February 2016 so I'd been engaged for about a year at this point so I was well into planning the wedding, um, most of the things were already planned which was really helpful because I was obviously super busy while I was at uni um, but one big thing that we hadn't done is buy a house, um, we really wanted to buy a house and not rent a house because we had been saving up since we were like 16 um, because we've been together for six years and um, we knew that we wanted to get married so we've been saving up and we had enough money to buy a house so we were looking for a house although I lived in Birmingham and Matt works in Stoke-on-Trent so we wanted to buy a house in Stoke-on-Trent because he had a job there and I like it that makes more sense than buying in Birmingham not knowing if either of us would have a job afterwards so we were looking at house in Stoke-on-Trent and so I had to travel back from Birmingham every weekend um, which kind of worked because I had like a weekend job in, in Stoke-on-Trent anyway so I would travel back on the weekends and we would spend some time looking around some houses looking on right move during the week and trying to find um, a house that was in our budget that we really liked we were looking at the lower end of things but we really we knew that we wanted a three bedroom house because we really wanted a bedroom, an office space and a guest bedroom for if we had guests around. 
um, and we yeah we just knew that we didn't want to have to do lots of work to the house because we didn't really have enough to buy a house and also spend a lot of money on the house build like doing it up so anyway we spent some time looking at houses and then we found one that we really liked which is this one and we bought it in February 2017 so going into 2017 everything was happening at once I was at uni I bought a house um, and then I finished my degree in May 2017 which was great I handed in my final ever assignment which was in fact I think that was my philosophy dissertation was the last thing that was due to be handed in the relief that I felt I sent off my dissertation because it was an electronic submission the minute that I sent it off I was just like I am done like eight I don't know how many years in educate 13 14 15 16 16 years of full education straight education and then I was done and it was like wow <laughs> I didn't have a job to go to I had no idea how I was gonna make enough money to pay for life thankfully I was getting married and I planned on getting married in July that year and Matt has a job so I was and he was like so lovely and he was like you can literally just like be a housewife until you find a job that you want to do um but I was obviously coming out of university so nervous because I hadn't got anything sorted I hadn't applied for any jobs or anything like that I had no idea what I wanted to do really um and the kind of things that I was thinking of doing had nothing to do with my degree so I was really worried that I wouldn't get it but anyway I finished my dissertation and that was great and then I spent between May and July just hardcore wedding planning like going ham on the wedding planning and that was really stressful and I ended up losing like 10 pounds because not intentionally like I really don't want to because I'm quite a small person anyway and my wedding dress was too big anyway um but they kept taking it in for me which was very kind of them <laughs> um but anyway yes that was really stressful just because I've never planned even a party before like I've never even planned a birthday party so going from like never planning anything to planning like the biggest party of my entire life my wedding um it was expensive and we just bought a house and yeah it was stressful but it was really really fun and I have a great family and obviously Matt was an amazing support and we did it together it wasn't just me um, and friends like my bridesmaids all pitched in and helped and it was really really good and yeah so I spent that the, those months of 2017 like between May and July just planning the wedding and looking for a job basically um that was literally all I did I planned the wedding and looked for a job and I kind of got this house a little bit ready as well like I tried to we had to buy a bed this bed <laughs> so fast forward to July I had the most crazy month okay so I graduated on the 6th of July um which wasn't that crazy because it was literally just one day and I'd already finished uni anyway. I'd like have my graduation ceremony on the 6th of July um, and I got my transcript and is it called a transcript? I got my degree paper thing. I don't even know where that is. I should probably find it. Um, and I graduated and then I found two jobs that I wanted to do um, and they were both kind of similar but there was one that I wanted more than the other one if that makes sense. Um, and I applied for them both and got an interview for them both and then one of the jobs the one that I didn't want as much as the other one the interview date actually fell on my hen party day and I was like this is just a sign that I should put all my eggs in one basket and go for the other job that I want actually more I had my hen party and that was super super fun um I'll link the video to the hen party down below because we actually did vlog it um and so I kind of was really trusting God that I would if I didn't get this other job that I really wanted just that there was something out there that was better for me now I was getting married well I did get married on the 22nd of July so this was three days before my wedding day I had an interview um in Litchfield which is an hour away from where I live so I I drove down there completely not thinking about the interview I was thinking about the wedding because how can you not three days before you're getting married and one of the guys on the interview panel because I applied for a job in the Church of England was actually the archdeacon who was the guy who was marrying us so he was the guy that we were having our wedding rehearsal with in the evening if that makes sense so this guy's on the interview panel interviewing me for this job 
and we both know that I'm gonna see him again at six o'clock when he like does my wedding rehearsal for me and and then again three days later when he marries me <laughs> um, but it was okay we kind of I didn't know about that before I we went and I was just like I'm okay with it if you're okay with it so let's just do it I got the job but yeah so I got a job I did my wedding rehearsal and then three days later I got married and that was a crazy crazy week because my life just instantly changed in June I was a student living with my parents with no job in July I was employed in a job that I really wanted to do I was married to a man that I love with my entire heart and I lived with him and we started traveling together for only for three weeks yeah we went away for three weeks so we went on our honeymoon that was the most fun ever because Matt and I we've never traveled together before if you watch I'll link a video down below where I talk about why we didn't live together before we got married and why we never traveled together but in a nutshell Matt and I are Christians and we really both felt that it was best for our relation for our marriage relationship in the future to not be too intimate together before we got married so we didn't have sex until we were married and we didn't want to put ourselves in a position where we would be tempted to do that so we didn't have sleepovers at each other's houses really and if we did then we were in separate rooms and we didn't go traveling together or obviously we didn't live together so it was really really fun to get to go traveling with him for the first time ever after being together for six years that was amazing uh, we went to sardinia which is an italian island we went to venice which is in italy obviously and we went to croatia which was beautiful i wasn't going to start my job until the 4th of september so i had like three weeks to just kind of chill out, get used to being married, um, hang out with Matt. Yeah, it was really, really lovely. And I think that is actually the time when I filmed the last YouTube video that I've posted on this channel was before I started work. So that was September, I started work. By the way, I'm sorry if this video is boring. I kind of thought it would be more interesting than this, but I guess I'm just kind of going through the year and telling you what happened but it's really therapeutic for me to like reflect back on it it's really like nice i'm gonna carry on anyway oh i can hear my kittens that i'm gonna get onto that very soon so before we even got married matt and i have been talking about getting pets and we've always 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 been talking about dogs like we always knew we wanted to get a dog together but anyway, we were chatting about that and then we decided one day, well, here's the story of what happened. So it was October and it was like two days before Matt's birthday and we were both at work, like at our respective jobs and Matt texted me and he texted me a picture of this like gorgeous Siamese cat in his office at work and I was like, what the heck happened mate? Um, not like that um and he had basically told me the story that this poor little kitty had been stuck up in a tree outside matt's office building um for like five days straight and matt's boss was like waiting for the rspca or someone to come and get it but they still didn't get it so he was like screw it i'm climbing this tree i'm gonna get this cat so he climbs the tree gets the cat brings it back down and takes it into the office and everyone's just like oh my god it's a cute cat so matt sent me a picture because he knows that i am like obsessed with all things cute and furry um i never considered myself a cat person i always thought i was a dog person but at this point when he sent me his picture i was just like oh my gosh like the story and the picture i was like this cat needs love i want this cat so i was like oh if you take it to the vets and it's not microchipped can we have it and matt was like sure and we were just like what really we'll, we'll get a cat together and Matt was like yeah let's do it why not let's have a cat it's so much easier to look after than a dog and like at this point in our life it's probably a better idea than getting a dog because we have quite a small house so I was like oh my gosh that makes so much sense so anyway Matt took it well Matt's boss's wife took it to the vets and it was microchipped which I was like that's so sad but it's actually happy because it was reunited with its owner and it's quite an expensive cat it was like a Siamese cat um so so I guess they wanted it back well also because they loved it um but we then had kitten fever we could not stop thinking about cats about how much we wanted a cat and yeah so basically that night we went on Gumtree and we were looking at kittens in our local area 
um, and we found this one gorgeous little white fluffy kitten and it was the last one left in its litter no one else had wanted it um, and I don't know why because she was absolutely stunning and she lived like five minutes away from us and it was just a girl who lives near us whose cat had gotten out and gotten pregnant um, by accident I assume um, so she was just selling the kittens on Gumtree so we went over and visited and this little kitten stole our hearts so we took her home with us and she's called Rue and this is what she used to look like Roo, that you? You self-aware? Hello. Hello. Oh. She wants to boop your nose. She likes to boop She will want to boop your nose, guys. Boop! <laughs> I'm going to go get her and show you what she looks like now. One second. This is my Roo Boo. She is four or five months old. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful, Roo. Look in the camera. Boy, boy. No, she's got this black spot on her back and a black tail and this beautiful black beauty mark on her cheek. <gasps> yeah, she's the most beautiful thing. She's called a Roo and we call her Roo Boo, don't we? And he's got a sister now as well. So fast forward to December, we decided that Roo needs a sister. She needs someone to play with when we're both at work. <laughs> Sorry, she's being so funny. Rory looks like a little baby kitten. So we call her, well, we called her Rory. I'm just gonna go get her and show you her. This is my raw bear. She is beautiful. The thing about Rory, look at these eyes. She is a starer. She will stare into your soul, won't you, Rory? Yeah. She also has a gorgeous ginger leg. Can you show them your ginger leg? No, don't wiggle. I love you. Robbie loves kisses. Don't you? Hopefully that calmed her down a bit. Okay. Can I show them your ginger leg? Look at that. She's got a gorgeous ginger leg. Okay, I know. And she's got little ginger button right there haven't you little ginger button i'm gonna put you down now we have rue and rory and they do have an instagram if you so desire to follow them i am obviously extremely biased but i think they're the most beautiful cats in the whole world so here is their instagram it's rue and rory and i will link it down below as well so that was december i think i've done the whole year so let's just Reevaluate. So at the start of January 2017, I was a student. I lived in Birmingham. I had no job. <laughs> I was not married and I didn't have my own pets. Like my parents had pets, but yeah. And now January 2018, I own a house. I live in that house with my husband. So I'm married. I have two gorgeous kittens and I love them so much and I have a job and I actually have a car as well but I had a well I drove my dad's car before but I bought my own car now so I have a mark on my face so yeah I guess things are extremely different from like now than when they were last year and I feel like I've aged a lot this year somehow like not that I feel like I'm old and that I'm tired and stuff but like I feel like I've just matured a lot. It's hard to explain but I feel like my life is much more of an adult's life now than it was just last year even though I'm only a year older. When you're like 15 you just kind of wonder what your life will look like. I feel like randomly my life kind of just fell into place and I have all the things that I wanted to have. I have a husband, I have a house, I have beautiful cats yeah i mean cat mom life genuinely i am a cat mom like these cats are babied so much aren't you guys yes i love them so much 
Um, but yeah, this isn't me trying to like brag about my life actually. Sorry, it kind of may have looked like that. I'm just kind of realizing as I'm talking about it that I'm really blessed and that I'm in a really good place. And there are so many things that I wish I could have, if that makes sense. Like there are places that I want to be and I've got so many goals to reach and I would love to like be doing something else. If that makes sense, like there are other things, like I'm not settled, I'm settled. This is really hard to explain. Like I have goals that are way bigger than what I've got right now. Um, and sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in those goals and to kind of feel like you should have met them already and feel down on yourself because you're not where you want to be with certain areas of your life and you're not doing the things that you know you want to do. Um, but then when you actually take a step back and look at where you are at right now, I feel really like grateful for where I'm at. Like I know I'm in a very solid place. I'm in a good place. And just because I am not where I would really love to be, doesn't mean I'm not gonna get there. Like there's a time and a season for everything. So for example, Matt and I have been saying for years and years and years that we want to travel together, like we want to do a good solid at least six months of travelling the world together um, or, or even just living in a different part of the world for six months or like for example living in Hawaii for three months and Australia for three months like just doing something that's not in England for a while just to experience that and it's so hard, it's so easy for me sometimes to be like oh I feel like I'm settling down too soon, like I don't want to get too comfortable, I want to be able to go and travel and do these things while I'm young and while I've got like savings and stuff and before I have children and it's easy for me to like get into a cycle of thinking that and then think down on myself because I'm not where I want to be, like I'm not reaching those goals of wanting to travel with Matt and stuff but then I just remind myself that like in order to do those things like I know there's a time for that, I know it is going to happen and I know that this time is important as well and that like I've made commitments now that I need to follow through for a while um, and just plan a bit more. So this time is perfect for me and Matt to plan, plan our travels and to save up for it and to decide what we're going to do with the cats and that kind of thing. and. We've got like, do you know what I'm trying to say? I feel like I'm just rambling now, but I think what I'm trying to say in this video is that a lot can change in a year, a lot can change in two years, and a lot can change in three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. And even though I feel quite old right now because of where I'm at in my life, I'm actually not. And there is never a too old to do something. And I can just... I can and I can plan for these goals that I want to meet to happen. I just need to plan for it and make it happen if that makes sense. And actually like follow through with my plans and yeah. Basically, just because you're not where you want to be right now doesn't mean you're never going to get there and you need to I need to appreciate each stage of the building up to the goals process rather than wanting to be there as soon as I've decided that that's what I want to do. So yeah, I think that's the point of this video really, is to reflect on 2017 and see that my life has changed dramatically and I am nowhere near where I was in 2017 right now, uh, January 2017. I am so much, I've grown so much in 2017, so much has changed for the better and I am very content with where I'm at and I thank God for that because that is a huge huge blessing and I'm so excited to see where I'll be in January 2019 and if our planning goes well then some of the goals not all of them but some of the goals that we have been planning to reach for a long time we will be reaching very shortly but for now I'm definitely posting on Instagram way more than I'm posting on YouTube so if you would like to stay up to date with my life and how I'm doing and how the cats are doing and how my husband is doing then please go and check out my Instagram I will have it here and I'll also link it down below I am just at Tamar Hope and I just post like lifestyle stuff vegan foodie stuff Christian-y kind of stuff like faith-based stuff and stuff about married life and basically anything and everything that happens to me so please go and give me a follow 
or just at least have a look at my account to see if you want to follow it. <laughs> Uh, I will see you guys in my next video and don't forget to check out the vlog channel of Man and Matt's which I'll put down below and I'll see you guys next time. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye guys. Guys look at this rain. I was wondering what the weather's like in England right now. This. Oh crap. My phone's getting wet. This is what England is like right now. Can you hear that rain? It's insane. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Also, cheeky outfit of the day. I know that I never ever do this, but, oh crap, my room's messy, sorry. But anyway, I'm just wearing this cute little dress that I got from Zara. I think it's actually adorable. But I have one issue with it, is that when I got it, it was ripped and I didn't know, and I've just ripped it even more accidentally which means that I can't even take it back because I ripped it. But like, it was already ripped, but I made the rip bigger. So what I really need to do, like it's not too tight, it's loose. So I don't know why it ripped more, but I don't know. I guess I need to go and buy a needle and thread and try and fix this mess that I've made. See you later, bye.